Good day and welcome to this particular broadcast. I believe that um, you are not here by accident. God has orchestrated your path to come in contact with this broadcast and it's going to be a blessing to you in the name of Jesus. My name is Samuel Adams and um, today I have a burden to talk on what to do when you fall into sin. Uh, one of the greatest problems of an average believer is the sin problem, right? And so this sin problem was introduced into the history of mankind in Genesis chapter 2 and in verse 17. God gave a clear instruction to Adam. He told Adam that there is a tree that contains the knowledge of good and evil, and this tree you are not permitted to eat of it, but you are permitted to eat any other tree in the garden, but do not for any reason consume or partake of this particular tree. And Adam, in the process of time, was beguiled by the enemy through Eve, his wife, and eventually came, in con came into disobeying the instruction of God for that particular era. And so the question of sin was again introduced in the history of mankind. So this is the origin of sin. Now, from the origin of sin, we see that God in his mercies. Now, every time, according to the history of scriptures in Genesis, God comes to meet with man. And so this particular day, after man disobeyed God and the repercussion came, the, the verdict was that the day you eat of the tree, that day you shall surely die. So when Adam disobeyed God and he ate of the tree, he died, but he was still alive. What does that say to you? It means that you can be alive, but you are dead exactly what that scripture is saying because Adam did not physically die because he was still alive to respond to God. He was still alive to respond to God. But in this particular context, the life of God in him and the ability to communicate with God and to live within the premise of God's glory died. And if that is dead in a man, you are as good as a living dead. Now, so Adam, on account of that transaction with sin, died actually. Now, but he ran away with the wife. In, it was, he became ashamed and scared, and he ran away from the presence of God and covered themselves with leaves. But when God came, he called out to him. He said, Adam, where are you? And Adam responded, we disobeyed you, Lord, and we became naked. He said, we are naked and we are, we are afraid, and so we hid ourselves from you. And God said, who told you that you are naked? And that was when everyone now knew the origin of what really happened with Adam. So Adam became naked and he ran away from God. Now, look at the next thing God did. The Bible says that God clothed Adam. He removed his attempt. So every of your attempt to righteousness is filthy. Your attempt to anything in grace without the help of God is filthy. So God made a super provision by bringing animal skin. So God was the first fashion designer in Genesis. So he clothed man and gave man a chance to return back to him. But at the time, as, at the time he was working to reconciling man to himself, Adam had to be chased out of the garden and kept away from the bounties that surrounds the goodness of God. So at the end of the day, you realize that Adam may have thought or Eve may have thought that they were missing something outside of the presence of God. Like many of you, out of adventure, have gone into things that you shouldn't because you felt that you are missing out on something. But at the end of the day, you now realize that, oh my God, there is such feeling of vanity, there is such feeling of dissatisfaction. And you are going to realize that you were not missing anything after all. The presence of God is enough for every believer. The presence of God is all you need to go through life and prosecute life and you will have a fulfillment at the end of your journey. But this, 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 these people thought that they were missing out something. For God to tell us not to do this, it means there's something we are missing. There's something God doesn't want us to do. And that's what Satan also came to tell him. He said, do you know that when you partake of this tree, you will be as wise as God? You will know what God knows. But at the end of the day, that was a lie, eventually. So you see, when you stay in the presence of God, you are not missing out on anything. There's nothing out there that, is it money, is it influence, is it cars, is it whatever. You are not missing out on anything. There is no pleasure outside of, this, outside of the presence of God. So Adam fell. This is the origin of sin. Now, when Adam fell, something died in him and it's called the Spirit of God in him. The Spirit of God in him that made him alive unto God. It is because of that particular installation in Adam that Adam, the breath of God, that Adam was able to fellowship with God every time God comes to meet with him. But when he fell from the garden, God had to drive him away because it's like um, 
a dead object. So God, Adam at that point became like a dead object that could no longer respond to God. Now, that's one of the things that sin will do to you. Sin will drive you to a point where you are no longer able to respond to the presence of God. You are no longer able to respond to the revelation of God's word. You are no longer able to respond to the glory of God. And if you go far enough into sin, a point will even come that you come into the assembly of God's people. You see the way people are connected to God. You see the way people fellowship with God aimlessly, without struggle. No, effortlessly, I mean, without struggle. But you are not able to, you are confused. You are like, what's going on here? You are looking at them as strange. Meanwhile, there was a time where you were like that. You were all out for the Lord. But now the things of God became strange to you because that spirit that makes you respond appropriately to God is now experiencing death. So what do you do? Now, when Adam fell, a part of him died, which is the spirit of God in him that made him alive unto God. All right. Now, God began a rescue mission through scriptures. He began to foretell about a provision that he is making to bring about the, the redemption of mankind and the redemption of the world. So God began to prophesy about the man Jesus, about his son Jesus, about the person of Jesus. He began to prophesy through the prophets. He began to bring typologies of him. He began to to, to talk, to speak through David in the Psalms about the coming of a, a, a man. He began to speak through Isaiah about the coming of Jesus. He began to tell us many years, many years passed. And then in, in Matthew, we began to see the coming of the Lord. How that Jesus was born, he died, he was killed, he died, you know, and resurrected from the dead. Now, this is it. Throughout my experiences in ministry, I have seen one, that one of the major problems of the average believer is the sin problem. Many people come to you and they tell you, oh, we did this, we did that, and then um, we, I'm not able to pray anymore, I'm not able to study the Bible anymore, and all of that and all of that. And many of them live in guilt, some for as much as five years, some 10 years, some are still tormented with some, a certain thing they did 20 years ago. What do you do when you fall into sin? What do you do when you fall into sin? Now, there are three dimensions. There are three dimensions to the same problem. And what are these dimensions? Now, there is a time that you sin against God. There is a time you sin against man. And there is a time that you sin against both God and man. And sometimes you also sin against yourself. So, for example, the sin of fornication is both a sin against yourself and against God. All right? But every other sin is without the body. But that sin of fornication is not without the body. It is against God and against yourself. And then there are also times that you do things that hurt other people. So what the, some, one of the things you do, if you, if you are talking about a sin that has to do with other people, one of the things you have to do is to repent before those people and apologize to them. All right? And then come to God. Now, in 1 John chapter, in 1 John um, chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, the Bible began to tell us that we have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus the righteous. We have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus, our priest friend. So God, God made a provision in grace that enables you to bounce back every time you fall into sin. So when you come into the place of prayer, now in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, he began by saying that little children, I write this unto you that you sin not. So God is not expecting you to be a perpetual sinner. He expects you to live sound in the knowledge of God's word and in righteousness. But perhaps you fall into sin. He said, we have an advocate with the father and his name is Jesus. And this advocate we have through the Father has paid for your sins, not just for your sins only, for the sins of the whole world. So when next you fall into a sin by whatever reason, the response is not to run away from God. The response is to run to the advocate. He is Jesus, the righteous. Now I'll give this brief example and then we are going to pray. Now, one, one time I remember while growing up, I was in the house with, I was in the house with my sisters. And so um, I was playing football in the kitchen and I broke a ceramic plate. I broke a ceramic plate. And then um, I was alone in the house with my sister. And so she said, hey Sam, I'm going to report you to dad when, she re when he returns. And I'm like, please don't do that because I was scared of my dad, you know, he's a disciplinarian, right? So I was scared. I didn't want him to get to know I broke one of the cups. And so he said, okay, let's have a deal. Every time that shows are allotted, domestic shows, you are going to do mine and yours. I said, okay, if that's going to keep your mouth shut, I'm in for it. Now, we began, day one, I was assigned to do something, she was assigned to do something. The moment my parents leave the house, uh, she will ask me to come and do it on her behalf. 
and I have no option because I have a sin that I'm trying to cover from being unveiled, right? So I was doing all of this. So one day I became tired. Mind you, I am the elder brother to this, my sister. And so I am supposed to be by right to have authority over the things that I do. But now my authority is submitted to her because of a secret sin. So the power of sin is fueled in secrecy. Every, every, that's why the Bible will say to you that he that covereth his sin shall not what shall not prosper. But he that confesses them one and turn away from them shall obtain mercy. So there are two conditions to obtaining mercy. One, confess your sins. Number two, repent from them, turn away from them, and you shall obtain mercy. So uh, on this day, I became tired and I said, you know what, when my dad comes back today, I'm going to meet him and tell him all what I did. So my dad came back, we had devotion, had meal and everybody went to bed. And so I went to my dad, I went to my dad and I said, dad, I want to share something with you. He said, go ahead, son. I said, um, some, some, about a week ago, I, I was playing football in the kitchen and I mistakenly broke one of your cups. And he was like, were you hurt? Hope you were not injured. I said, no, sir, I wasn't. He said, please be careful. The kitchen is not a place to be playing football. It's not a playing ground. And I'm like, ah, is that all? No, no, no discipline, nothing. Is that all? And he said, be careful. Don't do that next time. Now go and sleep. And I was so excited. So I waited till the next day. And the next day, they shared shoes for us. And then my sister came as usual. I said, yeah, so take care of the clothes that I was assigned to. Take care of it. And I said, you know what? I ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> and she was so upset. She was like, I'm going to report you to that. I'm I said, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And so in the evening, my dad came back. And she ran to him. He said, hey, so uh, um, someone broke your trauma, broke your cup. This and this and that and that. And I said, oh, yeah, he informed me yesterday. She was so ashamed. This is what happens between you, Satan, and God. You committed an offense against your father. The cup that was broken was my dad's property. He bought it with his money, not my sister's property. So if there's anyone that have the ability to punish me for that sin, was my dad. But I suffered long in the hands of my sister because I gave her the power to decide my punishment. So do not give Satan the privilege to decide your punishment. David knew this mystery. So when he sinned against God, God came to him and said, three options. Decide to fall into the hands of your enemies, decide to fall into my hands, or decide to, you know, to fall into the hands of. And David said, Lord, I will fall into your hands. So if you know that there is a further dimension of God, you would decide to fall into his hands every time you fall. And so I want, to, I want you to have this consciousness that whenever you fall into sin, the sin you committed was against God. And the person that can decide your lot and punishment is God. And this is God saying in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, that when you fall into sin, you are not supposed to fall into sin if you align with the grace of God and the precepts of the word of God. But when you fall into sin for whatever reason, don't run away from me. Come to the throne of grace boldly and meet with the person who is the advocate and his name is Jesus. So Jesus was speaking to the prophet. He said, is your sin as red as scarlet? Come now, let us reason together. Not go away, let's reason. He said, come now, let us reason together. Remember the story of the prodigal son. The father was more ready to receive him that he was ready to return. And that's why on the day he was coming back, the father was at the gate with his arms open. So if you are a believer, you are listening to me right now, you fell into a particular sin, you don't know how to come out of it, you have struggled in your mind, Satan brings guilt anytime you go to the place of prayer. Next time, I want you to go back with this word for Satan and look him in the eye and say, I sinned against my father, he forgave me my sin, now get out of my mind. And you are going to see the miracle, the miracle of deliverance that happens to your mind, the healing that goes on in your spirit and the unity of the soul and the spirit of God. Hallelujah. So I need you to have this consciousness and I'm going to pray with you for everyone struggling with an addiction. The goal of God is that there is a provision of grace that helps you to stay above sin. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you that whatever has held you bound, whatever has kept you away from the presence of your father, whatever has taken you far from your calling and ordination, 
I receive the grace of God and I extend it to you. He said, we have been commissioned to forgive the sins of people. He said, whoever sins you forgive is forgiven. I join my faith with you on the supply of the grace of God. You are forgiven in the name of Jesus. The grace to live above sin is supplied as you listen to me right now in the name of Jesus. And I ask that from now henceforth, you live in the liberty and in the power and in the glory and splendor of the love of God. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening. The Lord bless you richly in Jesus' mighty name. Once again, my name is Samuel Adams and you can follow us on the following social media handles on Facebook, Samuel Adams Ministries, on YouTube, Samuel Adams Ministries, on Instagram, Samuel Adams Ministries, and on Twitter, Assam Ministries, um, and a few other social media handles, even on TikTok, Samuel Adams Ministries. Um, you are going to see them display after this video. Um, you can reach out to us for, for, for prayers, counseling, and whatever inquiries you may have. Um, I am your partner in this work with Work of Faith, and I'm your brother with love from my heart. Jesus is Lord. Glory to God.